Um, all right, I will go ahead and get started here. Um, my name is Ross Phillips and I work for Oracle Corporation. Um, Daniel Smith is uh, works for Apertus Solutions. Uh, he's my co-presenter. He's in the session with me here. Um, I don't have a lot of time, so I'll just get right into it. So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so what I'm gonna be talking about is our current secure launch efforts uh, for ARM. Um, to this to this point, we've been doing exclusively x86, but we're now moving to it to implementing a uh, dynamic root of trust measurements uh, solution on ARM2 using um, much of the same framework. The first part of this introduction is just going to be a quick introduction, quick, quick introduction to the French food project and, and the state of what we have today. Um, so trench food is an open source project working to provide a uh, dynamic launch solution across various architectures. Like I said, we're currently working on primarily uh, x86 platforms, for example, at Intel and AMD. Um, and uh, trench food, the overall trench boots uh, is We'll work on various operating systems and kernels also. I, I happen to be focused on uh, Linux side of things, but there's work going on on Zen too. Um, so Secure Launch. Secure Launch is just is, is the name of the feature under which we're doing the work to provide the, the, uh, the DRTM solution. And uh, um, I assume that everyone's somewhat familiar with with the dynamic root of trust measurements, um, and 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 what that means for anchoring trust in the system. Um, so uh, we the, the 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 portion I work on we call Linux Secure Launch because it's targeted at Linux initially initially. Um, uh, so that, uh, as I said there, yeah, so it was targeted at targeted Intel x86 first. The, the first sets of patches went up for that. Um, there's a slide later, later on where I'll just summarize the current state of things as far as submissions go. Um, we have AMD support um, that's basically feature complete. It's waiting for um, some of the DRTM information from AMD to be published uh, published for, to be made public. Um, we've, we've been doing this for several years now and we've encountered quite a few um, quite a few things, um, challenges and whatnot on our, on our effort upstreaming the uh, patches to to the uh, Linux kernel. Um, and in that process, there have been some positive results. For example, we base our architecture around what we call the secure launch resource table, which is which effectively is the ABI between um, the different portions of the launch environment. And uh, what we're finding is that the work we've done for x86 is, is also translating well across other architectures as we start to, to dive into doing doing the work on ARM. Um, this, this diagram is a basic overview um, of how things work today on, say, an, X80, an Intel x86 system. Um, I'll just, I'll just kind of go over it quickly because you'll, you can, you'll be able to see how this translates into what we're going to, what we uh, plan to do on ARM. So um, there's the, the, the the uh, pre-launch, um, the uh, pre-launch uh, phase, where the boot manager invokes our um, our pre-launch code. Um, uh, we have several different ways of booting through. We're currently using Grub as the bootloader, so we have ways of, we, we can boot through uh, straight through in a in a in a. Uh, a legacy uh, Linux boot into x86 kernel, or we can go through the EFI stub code that's in the kernel and then return and finish the launch inside the uh, 
inside the uh, pre-launch code in Grub. Um, and then in the center, you see the DRTM event. That's the uh, that's the actual uh, hardware instruction that initiates the uh, DRTM. Um, for example, on Intel, it's it's the uh, GetSec S Center instruction. Um, there's a separate one for AMD, and and there and, and there will be one for. Uh, uh, arm two and the details of how each of those work are are documented by uh, are documented for the various architectures. Um, and then on the right is basically a standard x86 kernel, basically booting up. Our initial code is embedded in the setup kernel where we enter through um, uh, several steps, a, a number of uh, uh, Valid a, a number of steps of validation and measurements are done during that setup kernel phase in SL stub. And then we let the kernel proceed to boot normally um, to the kernel proper through, uh, you know, however it was extracted, um, either through EFI or, or, uh, or um, in a legacy boot. And then within the kernel proper, there's some startup for, for x86 or the, uh, some startup code for things like the, uh, for bringing all the other uh, APs or SMPs online. And then when uh, when um, the boot process is done, the last, one of the last modules that loads what we call the SL module, which resides in memory as a service for the DRTM environment. Um, the DRTM environment is once you're up and fully running within the DRTM. Um, the details of that are specific to what implementation some uh, a user would would be interested in, and then user would be interested in. Um, in this case, uh, I mean we have our you know we, we have the the solution we've been using, but that's that's just um, our our personal choice. Um, but within the DRTM environment, you're actually in the DRTM and 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 can form the steps that one might think of like um, various attestation steps to to prove the state of the system before before allowing it to boot further. Uh, so, kind of switching away from what we've done so far on x86. Um, this is just a reminder slide of, of the ARM exception levels and states, um, which come in, which will come in a little later when it explains which which pieces of the uh, ARM solution reside in at, at which exception levels. Um, and then this slide's mainly here for reference these are these are is just uh terminology um a lot of the a lot of the first half of that list is is defined by the uh, uh tcg specifications um some of the names are a bit specific to arm um but the, you'll see the name these acronyms and names being used throughout the the uh throughout the um presentation, um, but they're all just summarized right here. Um, the most important ones we're going to talk about are the uh, the uh, the uh, sorry, uh, the the, uh, the 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 first few, the dynamic launch event itself, so the DC DCRTM and what that is. And then um, the DCE and the DLME are the are the post-launch phases of the uh, of a dynamic launch, um, and those will be things that um, we would be Im implementing on on our side. Um, and then things like normal world and secure world refer back to um, the way exception levels are broken down on ARM. Um, so, uh, the initial ARM architecture was produced by ARM itself, um, and it covers, you know, both hardware and firmware implementations that can be done with this. Um, the initial 
designs and implementations will be firmware back because that can be that could be produced and and put on a system that doesn't currently have hardware support for doing a uh, dynamic launch. Um, but the expectation is that the next generation of chips will 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 provide a hardware back solution, which, um, which is where we ultimately want to get to. Um, this is a diagram right out of the specification for um, a firmware back dynamic uh, dynamic launch um, implementation. In this case, everything is there. There, everything is written in. Um, everything is in either software or in firmware running at EL2 or EL3. Um, other than the interactions with the uh, with the TPM. Um, in the case of say our the vendor we're working with, they would provide the they would provide the um, the component called the DCRTM that's in secure firmware, and um, uh, we would be providing um, under the secure launch project uh, the the components on the left um, the the DCE preamble, which is the the startup code for the entire launch, which happens. Prior to entering the secure environment of the D, uh, DRTM, and then post-launch, it returns back to um, a component called the DCE. In this case, um, since we're in EL2, that would be what was earlier called the normal world DCE. Uh, there's there's also a, a potential concept of a secure world DCE, where the where the um, this, and the spec allows for this, where the um, where the vendor can also supply their own custom DCE to do to do some um, operations after the the DCRTM runs. Um, I, I do want to note that it is the DCRTM that um, initiates the uh, uh, dynamic launch event and puts you in the in the in the DRTM. Um, and then finally, the the um, the DCM is responsible for returning from from the uh, DCRTM environment and then preparing things for the actual DLME, which in our case um, will be uh, at least at least initially will be the uh, Linux kernel um, with with executing some custom code um, on the post launch side. Um, so the these, this, the DCE preamble that I noted here, the the, the pre-launch code, um, it will initially be uh, it will initially be done in in Grub, Grub. A lot of what's in this slide, I won't um, go into um, high level details, but these are all um, requirements of the of the um, ARM specification in order to in order to set up the environment to initiate the. To, to call into the DCRTM and to initiate the dynamic launch event. Um, actually, I, I should clarify that a little bit. The 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 the, the, D, the DC the the uh, DCE preamble will actually initiate the event itself. That that event will transition you into the secure the secure uh, secure world uh, DCRTM code. Which is the firmware implementation of the DRTM. Um, so, so the yeah, the, so the um, pre the, the DCE preamble will will do all the steps necessary to set up uh, the environment as per the spec. Um, it will also uh, pop, and I'll talk a little bit more about the SLRT. Um, it will also populate the. Uh, SLRT, which is the basically all the information and the ABI between the pre pre launch world and the post launch world, um, and then um, and, and then ensure that uh, the the state of everything's uh, in the everything's in the correct state for initiating the dynamic launch event, which will will then transition into the the. Uh, the secure firmware to to complete the the event pro, or the launch process. Um, I wanted to cover this. Well, we wanted to cover this uh, 
this this area of memory is defined the uh the, D, the dlme region is is um where the dlme image is actually loaded into memory in this case our our linux linux kernel um and then the DLME also contains this data region from conveying information to the DCR, CRTM, and other parts of the of the launch process. Um, the the pieces in gray are are basically defined by the ARM specification, but the ARM specification also allows for the for areas in the middle there to be used for um, implementation specific details. In this case, it's our um, secure launch resource table, which is effectively the ABI between the pre-launch and the, and the post-launch world. Um, so the um, the uh, so this the uh, the SLRT is completely defined by the by the secure launch feature itself. Um, And as noted in the in the earlier picture, we will be not only um, work, you know, providing the uh, preamble code. We also provide the normal world DCE. Um, this is the uh, the DCE is the dynamic configuration environment that runs after the uh, after the DCR. DCRTM has set up the uh, measured launch environment and and is is ready to return back to to um, is ready to return to code running within the the, the newly established DRTM. Um, the, uh, the the main job of the DCE in this case is going to be basically extracting information that the uh, DCRTM uh provided and then and then and bridging the gap in into the boot into the arm kernel um we this is a future consideration we don't really have to to, to cover this yet because there is no hardware implementation or or an implementation of a secure world dce um but if there were we would we would we would have the same we would have to do the same thing there which is to bridge the gap between the the uh the bits of the system provided by the by by the uh by the platform versus um get uh actually launching the the uh uh arm linux kernel and if everything works out the way we hope um we should be able to boot through a standard arm linux entry point without having to introduce our own um, which is some uh, uh, without any modifications to the, to the uh, early startup code, with the exception of possibly um, uh, calling out to one of our functions to do early measurements. Um, the DLME itself is is actually the 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 uh, the, uh, the uh, ARM Linux kernel. Um, the primary we we're, we're at the moment assuming and that'll be true for our first uh, attempt at this is that it'll be a uefi based platform in that case we use the we use the uh the ability to register a uefi configuration table um and then uh the detection and, and location of that table is how the uh dynamic launch is detected and established within the the uh, newly launched uh DLME kernel. Um, if for some reason that is not the case, and we need a separate way to locate the that table, which everything is basically um, uh, everything is basically centered around, then we will we may have to introduce a separate uh, entry point that has the capability to do that. Um, and as I said. Um, there will be no real modifications to the uh, the, the flow of the um, entry point. Hopefully, if, if things work the way we believe they will, um, but there will be some secure launch specific code early on to do measurements um, and validation and and to extend extend the registers in the PCR in, in the DRTM registers in the PCR to uh, to reflect what was measured during the launch. 
Um, and one big difference between um, x86 platforms and ARM platforms is there, uh, and specifically in, in a firmware based solution is that um, there is a lot of code involved in, in bringing, uh, especially on Intel TXT and in, in bringing um, the APs online after the, the start, the start of the launch, because um, the, the, uh, the hardware for uh, Intel TXT puts the, uh, the APs in a very specific states, so they have to be handled differently than normal. SMP bring up, but in the case of ARM, this is not the true. The the uh, the dynamic launch event is initiated, and and the rest of the processors, the PEs are are uh, not running. So we don't have a huge pile of SMP startup code to deal with. Um. So. Uh, the, the first part of this says assumptions. One of the one of the reasons is there. so we're making assumptions based off of um, a, um, based off of the way the uh, DRTM architecture for ARM document lays it out. Um, some of the, on the second uh, bullet point though, the ARM uh, architecture documentation leaves a. a, a Various parts of the of the boot process uh, to the um, vendors and OEMs to decide how they're going to implement it and what the what the various handoffs and uh, is from um, say secure world to normal world look like. So we're currently, though we have a, an outline of what we're doing, we are currently waiting on further documentation to determine how the DCRTM will communicate to the to the dce and return you to normal world um and that and the um api between the two the abi between the two is is uh solely dependent uh, or solely defined by the, the vendor themselves um and also our group has not done a lot of uh myself in particular i've not done a lot of work on arm so we're Having to come up to speed on that, but that's in in progress. Um, and uh, another assumption we're making is about the way the um, the TPM is handled. Um, but we are expecting we are expecting to be put into locality two in the TPM, which is the DRTM locality where we want to do our trusted measurements and and and. Uh, and get the system to to a known boot, booting state. Um, so that was that was basically my uh, present. That was basically the presentation covering um, the ARM work, which is in its nascent phase right now. Um, the, uh, the the as noted earlier, we're, we're we're actively working on other parts of it. Uh, we just submitted version 10 of the Linux of the secure launch uh, patch setup to LKML. And this, this, this is solely for Intel TXT platforms at the moment. Um, uh, the the, the pre-launch, the, the existing pre-launch code has been rebased on a, a newer version of Grub that's upstream in the French food project. And we also introduced some documentation this time to help people get started with the project, um, and be able to pick up the pieces and 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 get something working end to end. Um, just last week, version eleven of the patch set went out, um, and this one was primarily focused around um, documentation changes to to explain some of the some of the ways our technology is being. Um, built and used, for example, the use of the sort of um, required usage of the SHA-1 SHA algorithm during the, the, the process of interacting with the uh, T TPM and what banks it has open. Um, AMD, for, uh, AMD support is, is actively being worked on. Um, and as I said, we're waiting, we're waiting for um, documentation to be published. and. Um, uh, the, the plan is that hopefully if we can get the uh, Intel x86 work uh, accepted upstream, we can 
we can then follow that up quickly with the uh, arm support right on top of that. Um, I mean, the AMD support right on top of that. And then, of course, arm support is in the early stages, but we're we're it's an app, we're actively working on that um, at the moment too. Um, so um, I think I got it uh, pretty much done exactly on time. Um, so I'll just open it up to any questions you have for me or for Daniel Smith um, concerning the uh, the work we're doing on ARM or the uh, existing x86 x86 work we've done. All right. So I'm a little bit confused about um, you say you want to use Grub as the normal old DCE, um, and on slide 11 you mentioned how you want to to boot straight into Linux kernel. Are you considering Linux kernel to be the DLME or have you got a loader that is the DLME that would load Linux? So, so Grub is being used as the, the, the preamble. Let me go back to yeah, right here. So Grub in this case is the preamble, it's the pre-launch code that will set things up per what the specification calls for and then initiate the dynamic launch event. Um, the thing that we're calling the normal world DC, which is below that on the left, is um, again that's that would be produced by us, written by us in the in the in the trench boot slash secure launch project. But um, that is the actual post launch code that the um, that the firmware back. DRTM will will eventually call into or return control to after the after the actual DRTM has been established by the by the secure firmware running in EL3. Um, and then finally, in this case, mostly what the normal world DCE is going to be involved in is um, setting up the environment so that I can do a, a clean boot into a, a DLME kernel, which in this case is um, a ARM64 kernel um, with hopefully an unmodified entry point. Okay, so that's the bit I'm trying then, to catch up on because the way that the DLME entry point is specified is incompatible with the ARM64 boot protocol. So if you want to do that, you will absolutely require a shim as the DLME entry point that then moves on to the ARM64 kernel. Um, can you can you repeat that? So the DLME entry point is defined differently from has a different protocol from uh, what the ARM64 boot protocol says. So it says, for example, X0 contains a pointer to a bunch of data. X1 contains something that's different to the ARM64 boot protocol, which says X0 contains right. a device tree blob. Like th those are just completely incompatible. And I don't think in the upstream kernel we want to add a separate entry point specifically for uh, DRTM. I think we would want you to have a shim loader that manipulates whatever and hands over if you want to use a standard kernel. Right. Um, the... so, let him finish first. Pardon? No, sorry, go ahead. Um, I, the, the, um, the assumption so far was that we would use the uh, normal world DCE to do that. Um, if a separate entry point is needed in the DLME to handle, if, if we can, we can, even though when returning from say the DR, DCRTM, you're, you're left in a certain state, the point of, part of the point of the normal world DCE is to, to turn around and and uh, uh, change that state um, and and prepare it for a, a uh, an unaltered entry into the um, into the the ARM64 kernel. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I'm that, answering your question. Uh, so, so what I'm trying to get across is that the way the DRTM spec is written, the it is the responsibility of the DLME to boot into whatever you want. The DCE is to put it into the spec specified in the DRTM spec for the handoff to the DLME, and that's very explicit. The state that you have an entry to the DLME is different to the state we want an entry to Linux. So you will need a shim there. Right. And um, if there, if there's a, sh so if there are, if that is the case, um, 
then we would we would have a shim that would basically do a, a ver something similar to what's done on x86 where it's its primary job is to to do whatever steps that are re required by the specification and then and then jump off to the uh, standard um, arm 64 entry point and then possibly in that early phase or possibly a little bit later on in the DLME is when the uh, when the measurements would be taken and uh, the, the, the logs and TPM would be updated. So, so if I can jump in here for a moment. We are jumping um, uh, into, deep, deep, uh, into technical details. I'll move the discussion offline if possible. Okay, all right, go ahead, next question. Uh, next question. No questions. Nobody is interested in the comments. Oh, Art has questions. Okay, nice. Um, so, looking at this from a bit higher level, it seems to me that uh, all this logic that you're introducing here to do uh, the, the dynamic launch could be part of the kind of switch from boot to uh, low-level reboot that happens when you do exit boot services. And a lot of this functionality seems like it should be part of the system firmware rather than be a separate component that runs on top of EFI uh, protocols in the beginning and then pivots into something else. So, yeah, this is also something we should probably take offline, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah it, it looks to me like uh, Copying the x86 design so far, which has many different boot uh, variants and modes uh, to support, is not necessarily uh, the right template to reuse here. Okay, thanks. So. Well, I mean, obviously, we're. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say um, that part, you know, th th this is early design period for this, and. Um, uh, uh, one one of the things we we were we are um, more than happy to entertain is any feedback on how it might be done other ways. So so just uh, to comment on that, so I was actually part of a, a reviewer and contributor to the DRTM spec for ARM. So one of the things that was guiding that was to actually make it look as close to the x86 approach as possible and, and gain the maybe address a few shortcomings, but for the most part, to try to make the two look the same. So that, I was also a reviewer on that spec, and that was not a goal we had internally, to be clear. <laughs> uh, Daniel, I think that you I, should uh, talk to I, I mean, it was being driven by the DRTM spec, uh, Daniel, derived from the x86 architecture. But Daniel, anyway. I think we are, uh, we are time out. Uh, I think that we should okay. move this discussion uh, to offline. I will get contact to ARM guys and I will get in touch with you. Okay, thanks a lot uh, for joining us uh, this year.